So I developed this passion for fitness. I um, became a personal trainer, a part-time personal trainer while I was in college at UC Davis. And after UC Davis, I worked for um, 25 Fitness Corporation. But then I was living in San Francisco, living a single life. It was enjoyable. I followed my passion. But then my calling brought me back home because my mom was struggling and dealing with kidney failure because for many years she didn't take care of her health and she didn't exercise. So I came back to Sacramento and I helped, helped her recover from kidney failure. She ended up having dialysis and having a transplant. So in this time frame, in 2007, I founded a nonprofit called Fitness Without Border. It's a 501c3 nonprofit and we're in a lot of school programs. And then after that, I, I fell in love with my husband who's here somewhere. And um, I don't know if you guys remember MySpace. That's where we met. <laughs> so, okay. So we met, we fell in love, and we had an unexpected pregnancy. And I gave birth in 2009, and then again in 2010, and then one more time in 2011. Isn't that nuts? Oh, yeah. I mean, imagine. I was, like, pregnant for three years. But, you know, during those, that time frame, I still maintained my fitness. I still worked out. I knew the importance of health because I saw my mom suffer, and I didn't want my kids to see me suffer because it's very painful to watch any family member suffer. So I d created a mom club in my area. In 2009, when I first had my first child, I created a free mom group where we work on the parks, and we, just, we, we meet, and we just do it for free. But in 2012, I decided that, you know what, I'm in pretty good shape. At the time, my kids were three, two, and eight months. And I decided that I was going to take this photo. And I was going to title it with, What's Your Excuse? Mainly because, what's your excuse and no excuse is a huge catchphrase. Who's, has anyone ever seen no excuses out there? Fitspiration photos? Yeah. Not a big deal. At least I thought it wasn't a big deal. And then so I decided to post it on... Facebook, and oh my gosh, I had so much response. Some people called me inspirational, motivational, and then some people felt insulted. Some people felt that I was fat shaming, that, wa that I was bullying, and that I was a bad person, and even a bad role model. It was a really tough blow because here I am, I'm a health advocate. I've always been a huge fitness enthusiast, and I know firsthand through experience, the, the importance of health. And so in this time frame, as you saw, I've been on Good Morning America, the Today Show, um, CNN. I mean, I'm at, I've interviewed in Germany, Philippines, um, Brazil. I mean, everywhere. This photo has gone viral, international, defending where I was, what my intention was, which my intention was first and foremost to inspire to show moms out there, not even moms, just even people like yourself, even men, that if you really wanted it, you can make it happen. You just need to find a way to overcome that excuse. Because really, it's that one excuse or that two excuses that's really preventing you from being your best. So it was a, it's been a pretty big roller coaster ride since then. I mean, when that photo went really viral last October, um, I've been in the media a few times since then, and I want to tell you about this other time I was in the media, which is in December, and it was a really tough time for me, and I want to express this to you because I'm talking about criticism, and I don't want you to think that I'm here and that it doesn't affect me and that I'm not in, I don't, I don't feel pain or feel regret. So let me tell you about this one experience after the photo went viral. So I posted on Facebook one day because I saw a campaign for um, obese women who were posing in lingerie. And I think everyone should first and foremost love their body and love who they are because then you'll start to nurture it. But I just came off of a roller coaster of backlash for being a fit person. So I said, you know, we need some, you know, real role models in society. We need healthy role models. We need, you know, we have an obesity crisis. And by 2030, if we don't make any changes in our country, 50% of our country will be obese. I was just giving stats. But because of that, I got a lot of just tremendous backlash. I don't know. Has anyone followed this story, followed my story at all? Okay, so let me tell you. Okay, 
I was, um, <laughs> I was kicked off of Facebook. <sighs> I was kicked off of Facebook, and they said it was because of hate speech. And I was thinking, oh my gosh, this is not hate speech. This is just saying the, saying the stats. And I was, you know, I had a really tough time. I mean, a lot of people thought that I was really now a fat shamer and that I was um, just a bad person. I mean, I was interviewed with, you know, Access Hollywood. You know, I was on CNN. I was on a ton of blogs. It was the toughest time, I think, in my life. I cried, seriously, at least 20 minutes a day for two weeks. I needed to get that out. And I didn't understand why this was happening, and I was in so much pain. And then in this process, I kept going back, and I went back to my passion. And I thought about, why am I in this? Why do I believe so strongly in my message? And I thought about my mother, and I thought about all the people that have written me and said that I made a difference in their life, and that they were motivated, even though they were a single mom, even though they had several kids or they lacked the resources I motivated them, and realizing that, I knew that I'm going to keep going with this passion, and I'm going to take the criticism. I'm going to take the hits, because health is important, right? Taking action is important, and I'm not going to sit on the sidelines and say nothing, because that's not who I am. When I was in high school, your age, some of you, one of the things that I had on my binder, because I'm a big quote person, is that your character is your destiny. And so I remembered that, and I thought about that deeply. So in January, off of this entire backlash, I came up stronger than ever. I created a calendar for moms. It has 25 other moms, before and afters, and they are of different shapes, sizes, and ages, representing health and fitness. And I created mom groups. Remember I told you about those mom groups? That, I, that mom group I started in 2009? Guess what? There are over 700 mom groups in 24 countries right now because I decided to say something and do something and take action. So you know, my advice for all of you right now is to find your passion. Find what you love because all of you are given a gift. And once you find what you love, educate yourself. Know exactly what it is that you stand for because that's really that's really what's going to push you in your life and create this destiny that you never thought was possible. I never thought that I would come back into the fitness world as I have. I mean, after I had um, left 24 Hour Fitness and was taking care of my mom, you know, I went into the elderly care industry, and I'm still there. But I still maintain that passion. I still had my programs with my nonprofit. I still have met up with my mom group. I still wrote for fitness. So even though I wasn't really there, I was always there. Even though I was an overnight success, that's not true at all. It took a long time to be where I am right now. So remember that. There's a big story behind the person that you're seeing. And it all started with a passion and a desire to make change. So, you know, I'm going to end this with another quote, because I love quotes. And it's by Tupac. Does anyone know Tupac? Okay, oh good, so I'm not, I'm not aged out yet. So Tupac said, okay, and, I, and remember this, because with criticism, there's anger, right? God, I felt so much anger. But it's okay, because of, out of anger comes controversy. Out of controversy comes discussion. And out of discussion comes change. And I hope to be that change. And I hope all of you become that change as well.